Hi there. So I'm going to be telling you about my inclusive space design. Um, I decided to base this activity activity off of a personal office space that I would have an education abroad office in a university setting. So to start off sort of with the basic layout of the, the office, um, one thing I tried to do is to make things as symmetrical and as even as possible. Um, I think that's really important in um, creating sort of like an equal power dynamic. You know, obviously I would be the advisor in this situation, but I want the students to feel a sense that they have power and um, just to say in sort of this process. So um, for example, uh, having comfortable and equal sized chairs, both at the table on the left and at my desk, um, you know, I think is an important detail just to just keep things, you know, even and equal. Um, and also having a clear line of vision um, between the, the two seats. Um, I didn't want the computer or uh, my desktop to be sort of like in between the two seats um, because I want the students or whoever I'm talking to to feel like um, they have my attention and that I'm really listening to what they have to say. And I don't want there to be that, um, that barrier. So that's uh, sort of the thing that I wanted to consider up front. Um, in terms of things that I wanted to include in the office, um, one thing I thought would be uh, an interesting idea would to have a land acknowledgement sort of framed, you know, right behind the office, because I think, you know, um, that would be very important. And to have that, you know, right behind me would uh, hopefully, you know, create a sense and get people to understand that, you know, that we are on um, indigenous land. And I think that's important to acknowledge um, and for people to see whenever they come in. And then in terms of my door, you know, I think it'd be really important to have certain sort of markers or flags just that really advocate for, um, you know, underrepresented groups in study abroad and uh, yeah, groups that have just been historically disenfranchised. So for example, having a pride flag or something um, on my office door, having a Black Matters, a Black Lives Matter, um, you know, flag on my door and other sort of things like that. Um, I remember when I uh, would meet with my advisor, she had a lot of different um, things like that. And I think that was really important in creating a sense of, you know, when people, right when they come to the office, that's what they're seeing. Um, they're seeing these things that are really promoting inclusivity and diversity um, and equity. Um, so I would really want to make sure that I included something like that on my door. Um, also on my nameplate on the door and also on my nameplate on my desk, I would want my gender pronouns to be there um, just to show that, uh, that this is something that I think is important to acknowledge. Um, how a person identifies themselves. And also at the door, um, right to the right, I would have name tags with uh, uh, a possibility or just a way to for someone to write down what their gender pronouns are and that they're able to write that down and uh, be recognized for how they identify. I think that would be a very crucial thing. And then one thing that I think I'd like to have would be to have a cork board on the outside of my office or even on the inside, but that would have different um, uh, information or links to different information um, in regards to a person's identity and what that might mean while being abroad. So during my um, informational interview with Christopher Adams, he sent me um, a really useful link for Oregon State University's um, identities and I diversity abroad page on their website. And they have resources for women and gender abroad, race and ethnicity abroad, LGBTQ plus students abroad, students with disabilities abroad, first generation students abroad, religion and spirituality abroad, heritage seekers abroad, and um, many more you know, categories and important things um, for students to see um, who would fit into you know, many of these important categories. So I would want to make sure that that would be outside my office and that that information for any student 
for, you know, however um, they identify with or what their identity is, that they have the resources right there, right outside the office that they can really check out. And I think it would be a good thing to have um, sort of like having the, uh, the flags, you know, um, on my door, just so like when students walk by, they really see that and they feel like we're really paying attention to, um, you know, all these different identities and what they mean, especially when you're abroad. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing that I would also um, like to keep in mind and have, you know, in my office. Um, wheelchair accessibility is also very important. I would want to make sure that getting to my office is um, as uncomplicated and as unburdensome as possible. And then I guess this isn't really so much about inclusion, but I've also read, you know, um, the color of your room can really make a difference in terms of like creating a calming mood. And I've read that sky blue wall color um, can help create more of a calming effect. So that would be my wall color. Um, so this is just the start. And, you know, there are so many different things to acknowledge um, and, you know, things to work around. But I think uh, these uh, different elements, I think would be a great start in terms of really uh, making a space that's inclusive and a space where a student, no matter what their background can come from, or no matter what their background is, they feel like when they come into this space, they feel safe and secure um, and that they feel seen, um, which is the main thing. So uh, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing everybody else's. Thank you very much.